uh, let us just for a few minutes let us have a moment of silence and it is so It is now time for our public comments uh, section of our Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, we ask that the participants in the public comment try uh, their best to limit their comments to two minutes. And I'm just going to do this in just the, in the order of the list that I was just given. So it may not be in the list that uh, in the order that you came forth. So. Uh, please forgive us for that. Uh, first, we called on Mr. Alfred Jean Pierre. Mr. Alfred Jean Alfred Jean Pierre. <coughs> Mr. Uh, Pierre, yes. uh, may I ask, a, let me ask a question, please. My name is Douglas Hawkins and I am the uh, chair. Uh, the meeting uh, idea that you have, how often would that occur and when, uh, what time of day are you looking at? And how much space are you uh, considering? How many how many people usually attend your meetings? Okay. Thank you. Oh, how, and how often? Monthly. I couldn't hear you. Monthly. 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 Thank you. Mr. Nolling, is there, is there anything that you wish to add to that, to this presentation? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, we have Ms. May Lied. Good morning. 
Good morning. Would you repeat that? Would you repeat that, please? I just we just couldn't hear you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Lyatt. The uh, and the board accepts the 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 board does accept uh, everything that you say. We're not in a position at this particular point to answer your questions, um, but we will um, we will discuss this, and we will also uh, thank you for bringing those concerns to us. But we will discuss this, and we um, someone will be getting back to you um, concerning these issues. Uh, a week. A week. Mm -hmm. 
someone um, I've just been told that, uh, that someone will be getting back to you within uh, the next seven days one week Yes, ma'am, it's live. Thank you so very much for coming. Are there any, was that all? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, we're moving to old business. I'll approve our minutes. Oh, excuse me. We need to approve the minutes uh, from our previous meeting, and I apologize for skipping over that. Um, what is your pleasure on the minutes? Uh, I actually have a couple of amendments that need to be made. Okay. Um, but for the let us let us go ahead and accept a motion on this first, and then you uh, then we will accept then we will accept your amendments if that's okay. A motion to approve the minutes. Um, a motion, just the mo just the motion, so that we can get it on the books. Just the motion to approve. Yes. And then we will yes. accept your okay. amendments. Chair will accept a, a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, Chair, we can't approve the minutes if there's some correction. To approve the minutes and then correct, um, there should be the correction and then approve. I thought that there would be the motion to approve and then uh, the unreadiness would be the corrections. Uh, the, the unreadiness would be the corrections. Am I wrong, uh, Brother Parliamentary? You are. He should make the corrections first. Okay. Then I stand corrected, Brother Porter. Um, and I'm not... <laughs> I'm about like everybody else, so you know this is a learning procedure, also. So I accept the uh, the ruling or the a suggestion of the parliamentarian. Okay, can we see your? Can we hear your uh, corrections? Uh, the Madam, first correction, sir. With all due respect, can I make um, amendment before we uh, actually approve the minutes? We need to approve the agenda. Okay. Um, you know, there's no approval of the agenda. And I do know that um, I would like to add something to the agenda. Okay, okay we will go back. Um, chair, will accept a, chair will accept a motion to, uh, excuse me, what is that you wish to add to the, to the agenda? Um, two things. First of all, um, well, I don't want to add, I just want to make a comment that is placed in the minutes, that Ms. Tasha placed this in the minutes, that the board did a couple of months ago, I think it was maybe two, three months ago, I'm not sure, but Linda B. Williams made a motion as to how we should set up our meeting. I second the motion and the board unanimously voted on that motion. So therefore, um, let the minutes reflect that this setup today was not approved by the board and we will deal with it in executive session. Okay, when you're, when you're saying the setup, you're talking about the physical setup Brother Jim, I'd rather deal with it in an executive session, okay. if you don't mind. Okay, so the uh, meeting setup uh, meeting setup will be added to, exec to executive session. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And, and also, I would like to add uh, the revised bylaws that we, uh, the bylaw committee um, submitted to you. Um, I would like to talk about that as well. With the additions, with the additions, uh, chair will accept a uh, motion to approve the uh, to approve the agenda. Gerard, will you make a motion to approve the agenda with the changes? Is there a second? Yes. Tom Porter, I second it. It has been moved and properly seconded that the agenda. Uh, be approved without with uh, with the corrections that have been stipulated thus far. 
All in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Opposers have the same option. And it is so ordered. Next, we have, uh, now we'll come back and have the uh, uh, amendments to the, the amendments to the, to the, are the changes to the minutes. Okay, the first amendment that I have, uh, it says that I uh, motion to nominate uh, what Rosa Mullins. What page? I actually. What page? Don't have a pack in front of me. I don't have one in my pack. Just one second. Okay, go right here. It was the uh, the nomination for a vice chair. I actually didn't make the nomination. I seconded the nomination, the motion. Who do you remember who made the nomination? I did. Gerard Motor. Yes, but then nowhere in the minutes does it say that, yes. Okay, has, um, has that been, because I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing that on page nine, it says, uh, Commissioner Gerald Mo uh, Gerard Moultrie uh, nominated Rosa Mullins, Attorney Mike Bike, and Bike asked if there's a second, Commissioner Thomas Porter seconded the nomination of Ro Rosa Mullins as Vice Chair. Um, was there any other nominations? There were no other nominations, and Rosa Mullins be elected vice chair by acclamation. Thomas Mo, Mo, Thomas Commissioner Thomas Porter made the motion to elect Rosa Mullins, Rosa Mullins as vice chair by acclamation. Okay. Is that the part that do you, is that the part that you wanted to take out? Yes, but in uh, after hearing the. Explanation, I accept that. Yeah, well, you will accept that, okay. Um, I just found that that is on page nine. Um, and as I said, I don't have it in front of me, so okay. I'm not privy to it. There was um, the vote on the credit card issue. It has everyone as voting yay, and I didn't vote on that at all, as I said earlier in the minutes, that right. I wouldn't be voting on that issue. All right. So we will change your vote. We will change your vote to abstain. Yes. Okay. And the same with the approval of the December meetings. Right. Uh, November, if there were no December meetings, right? Whatever it was. And I also believe there were some Creekside issues on there, and I definitely uh, abstain from voting on those as well. And that would be the last of my amendments. He said something about, excuse me, he said something about Creekside? Yes. Did we do some voting on Creekside? On, let me see if I can find that. see that vote in our minutes. As I said, I don't have it in front of me, and 
if we can't be found, then I'll accept that as well. Brother Jim. Yes, sir. Um, can I ask a question, if I may? Certainly. Uh, well, not a question. I'd like to make a statement. Because many of us um, don't actually bring the packet with us. With all due respect, can we get a copy of the actual minutes and have the minutes actually read in each meeting so that we can be very clear what we are voting on and making sure that everything that we are voting on um, and approving in the minutes it actually took place. If that is a, if that is the will of the board, I have no issues with it. I think that um, one of the reasons that uh, this is done and that we are that that we are sending them out prior to is that um, you know it is a time-saving issue to you know rather than reading you know nine pages of minutes um, so um, I think that that is something that we probably have to just take on uh, take under advisement and or um, we just have to, at this particular point, can we just see if we can, if it continue and we can do, you know, we can do better, um, rather than to have them read. I do, I do agree um, that we should have, um, that we would like to have, a, um, a, even though it is sent, that we, we would like to have paper packet. Just print us a paper, a, paper, a paper packet, you know, for those of us who like um, misplaced their iPad and can't read, uh, whose eyes can't read the phone. And um, so if it's here, you know, even though we've read it before, if it's here, it's easy to find. See, like right now, this is this is this was easy to find because, I, you know, even though I read it and I don't have it electronically. I can go. Uh, I can go very, very close to it. Can I it yes, ma'am. Mr. Chair, um, the reason why um, we we stop printing, we used to print them before. Um, if the board would like to have a printed copy, the purpose of us giving the tablets a few years ago was to stop um, doing the printing, and you all, if you all wanted it, you all can make a copy. However. If the board has now changed and said that they would like a hard copy, then I'm um, not sure the purpose of us, the board, having the, the tablets anymore. Yeah. If we're going to do the hard copy, and I'm, I'm doing whatever the board asks me to do. So if you all prefer a hard copy, we can send it via email and have a hard copy um, here when you come on the day of the board meeting. But um, the purpose, the reason why that we all agree back then, so we wouldn't have to make all these copies and paper, but if the boy has changed their mind and would like a hard copy, we would definitely make sure you have one. Okay. one if I could, Commissioner. Um, I've never received a tablet. I didn't know that we yeah. had. That was, that's one of the things that was going to be discussed today. So, um, but one of the, just one second, one of the um, concerns is, you know, even with the board portal now, um, I'm not able to log in. Um, and we can resolve that. We okay. definitely can. Um, that's some technical issues. And we have our consultant here today, so we will address that immediately after this meeting. Okay, thank to you. resolve that as well. Okay, um, basically, I, I guess we're at a point where we do, where we just go ahead and need to make a decision. Um, paper or electronic? 
Are there any other uses for the tablet uh, no. in the meetings? And the plan was to also give you all an a iPad in the next month so we won't have these issues because the, the tablets are obsolete and we were going to replace them with iPads in the next month or so um, so that you all will have access not only to your packet every month but as well as the board portal. And the board portal is, uh, is the place where it has all of the, you know, basically all of the minutes that we've, um, of what we've had. It also has the, uh, it also has the current bylaws. It, all of that information is in one, one all of the votes and so forth, all of that is in one s section. Now, the downside, not the downside, but the other side of that is that it is electronic. Um, so, um, <laughs> six one way, you know, so we just have to make a decision. And then if we need to defer this decision, we can defer this decision, but um, in the interest of time, if you want to, if, if you want to go forward with it, then of course you know the procedure, but if not, um, if we, you know, it is something that can come up at another time. Um, I recognize um, Sister Williams. May I please have a, have a copy this morning? I don't have one and I cannot see on my phone. Because I want to make, okay. And I also, think that's where Tasha is going out. Okay. And also, I would like to, um, before we approve these minutes, I would like to rescind my vote for Meals on Wheels and Save a Lot because of what the public publicity is out there saying that um, Ms. Elmore, myself, and Linda Mitchell Johnson are sorority sisters, and we are. And when, and it's out there, people have been calling me. I have folk from, my, from out of other chapters, not even Florence that are my friends that are in higher levels and I gotta keep Alpha Kappa Alpha name and sorority sisters out of housing authority business. And anytime an issue comes up or a recommendation comes up in reference to um, another soror and Ms. Elmore and myself, just, 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 you know, just leave the room because Yo, my, it was good for me to say that because I do work with a program, but I don't want my good to be evil spoken of. I have a good reputation out there and I want it to stay like that. So I would like to rescind my vote and anything that I know, somebody that's really close to me or something, I don't want to be involved in it because it's all out. It was on TV 13 also. I don't really want to be a part of that. Um, so we can, I want, I want to uh, send my, my vote, and I did send it out to the board um, earlier in, a, in, a, in the email that we had going, the board's email. Y'all can vote over, and I, 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 I won't have anything to do with it, and it'll be on the record saying that I did not vote that way. Okay. Um, and even the you? city council asked me that. No. Well, call me and ask me nothing out do I mean cahoots because I'm not. Question. <coughs> that was a special meeting. Well, it may not be on these notes, but it's the special meeting. I want it on the record. Okay. You know, let me, let, let, okay. Is there anyone else that needs to rescind their vote on that particular issue? Are there any other disclosures that need to be made? Because like I, um, like it was in the, in, in the past, I have had a, um, a contractual, I did not vote on this issue, um, but I have a contractual relationship with my business, um, with Sister Johnson, 
Um, and I guess, uh, I guess I need to disclose the fact that we went to college together. <laughs> We've been knowing each other for 50 years. Um, With all due respect, no, um, Brother say. Chairman, you're not a voting member. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to disclose because you didn't vote, so you're not a deciding factor. But I think in the near future, I'll say this and let this be on the record and let it reflect the record. In the near future, when anything come before this board, if there's a relationship such as AKA, church member, or anything, I think the executive director should be clear to that and allow us the opportunity whether or not to vote because um, there's a motion on the flow and um, Sister Linda, she got a motion on the floor. We need to entertain the motion um, because I don't want to vote in this situation. Um, I, so the motion is on the floor. We need to entertain the motion. And I, may, I'm, I'm, I made the motion. I the one who made it. And someone else second. I can't remember who seconded it, but I made it because I know they have good food and stuff, but that was not my intention. And I don't know how Creekside guy, I can't think of his name, knew that. But that's okay about that. Can okay. I, can I please say something? Um, go ahead. Uh, well, let's go with Ms. Elmore first and then you. Mr. Chair, I, I need to respond to that because um, because of my relationships with organizations, you all are telling me that I should not deal with anybody if they are a part of an organization. No, ma'am. Because I'm in several organizations to include Eastern Star, to include sorority, to include Jack and Jill. So is this the board telling me because if they have any affiliation with any organization that I'm in that we shouldn't do business with them? We are about taking care of our residents. This has nothing to do with uh, organization affiliation. Doing what is best for our residents. Okay. And, and it bothers me knowing that because I'm associated with an organization that I don't know how to do business and procurement, there's nothing in the procurement policy to say, oh, you can't do business with a uh, person because you know them or because they're in the same organization that you're in. It's not illegal, it's not immoral or unethical. Okay. We're following the procurement policy in everything we do. So it's like now we shouldn't give these benefits to our residents because we have an affiliation or an association with an organization. That's unheard of. I'm sure I'm not the only one that you know, deals with other organizations that they know someone. And then for you all to say that I shouldn't even deal with or bring it to the board. So now every time I bring something, I have to say, oh, that person is in Jack and Jill with me, or that person is in um, the Rotary with me, whatever the case may be. That's not business. That's not good business sense. The main thing, the board is supposed to make sure that I am following policy. And that's what I'm going to do. And I will continue to do from the time I came, January 2017, until now. And I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted right now. Okay. And Madam Executive Director, I'm going to. Let me, uh, let me interrupt uh, you if I may, um, Chairman. Personally, I said it. So the board didn't say it. I said it. And let me be clear with this, Ms. Elmo. We can play with words. We can say whatever we want to say. But let's put the elephant in the room and let's start playing games, all of us as board members. You don't have to tell us anything, but I think it's the right thing to do, the dignity thing to do, the moral thing to do, is say this is my AKA sister and then I can't speak for the board. Then allow me the opportunity to say whether or not I want to vote. Just, just put all the cards on the table. Had I known that this was your sister, I would have refrained from voting. I, I just would have refrained from voting until I find out whether or not it was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. So. Personally, no, you don't have to tell us every affiliation, but I think being transparent, that's what transparency is. I think the transparency part would have said, hey, man, this is my AKA sister, or this is whoever. You know, listen, those Crescent guys, those are my Masonic brothers. And if you guys voted right now, I would refrain myself because they're my brothers. I would not vote for them because it's not the right thing to do. And I would let the, the record show that they're my Masonic brothers, and I would not vote with them. So... 
It, again, Ms. Elmo, with all due respect, no, I'm not policing you. No, I'm not telling you. The board didn't say anything. Gerard Moultrie said it. I said if that was your AKA sister, you should have told us. And if you didn't tell the rest of the board and the rest of the board didn't care, you should have at least told me so I can make a form of decision whether or not I want to vote. Thank you. Okay. Now, Sister Mullins. First of all, I, I think that should not be a, a issue, y'all, because I'm feeling like Miss Linda Williams didn't disclose that she's working volunteer with Miss Johnson at um, Meals on, on Wheels. Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. Why are we taking this thing so personal? I mean, we're trying to to, to do something for the. Um, I think that I think that this is a matter of residents. Residents. I, 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 I think that this is a matter of. I don't understand it. And this is this is something that I, um, I one I think it needs a little bit more, um, it needs a little bit more um, clarity. Um, unfortunately, um, unfortunately the the board attorney is uh, within a hearing right now. Okay, um, but I don't think that this is one of those. I think that this is one of those questions that we can uh, that we can do a little bit. Um, uh, okay, but you're Hunter. right. There is a mo there is a. Uh, would you restate your motion? I uh, like to restate my motion, my vote. And we send my, you can vote over, y'all can vote over, and I'm not going to say it. Somebody else can make the motion, but I want to resend mine. And it's not personal to anybody else, because it don't have nothing to do with it. It's okay. mine, how I feel, uh, and that should be respected. Okay. Thank you. All right. So there is a mo. is there a second to allow Ms. Um, Williams to resend her, uh, to resend her motion, which would bring the, which would bring the question back up. Was the motion to to recall the vote or to reset her vote? To she actually made the motion. I want my name off that and the um, the vote. I'm not going to vote. She actually made the motion, so um, there. I mean, so she is actually rescinding her motion. Okay. So if it rescinds her motion, it also rescinds her vote. Gotcha. All right. So is there a second? I second it. All in favor of the recension of the vote. But before you, uh, before we vote, Douglas, I want to make a substitute motion and let's table this item until the lawyer's here to tell us so it can be recorded what he says. Is he coming? No. Um. Okay. <clears throat> Let me ask, um, have we, where are we in the, and actually, have we signed the contract yes. and, uh, and has this already been, has, has this already been put into place? Yes, we signed the contract after the board meeting. Have we started providing the meals yet? Yes. No. Other when? Last Wednesday. And the contract ends at the end of this year. Well, uh, Brother Chair, I was under the impression that the board was told that this started March. No, sir. No, we didn't say that. It, it was in February the 12th or 11th or 12th. February. Somewhere in that area. Yes, it was February. What day did we say? February the 13th. It was 13th. 12th. We were supposed like to that. start. Okay. In, in light of the fact that the contract has already been signed, in light of the fact that services have already been started to be rendered, uh, Brother Moultrie, Brother, Mo, uh, Brother Moultrie, would you consider reconsider your motion? No, I'm not reconsidering my motion. Okay. I mean, the lawyer, he, 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 first of all, let me, let me say this to you, members of the board. I've been on this board for three years, and we voted 
the lawyer. He doesn't have a contract with us. And he's not serving us any good. But I'll table my, the rest of my discussion about the lawyer till we get an executive session. And I'll deal with an executive session. Again, the lawyer worked for the board. All right? He, just like every one of us as board members got a life, and we make, you know, we make our schedule. When he made his schedule to go do whatever here, and he knew he had an obligation at this board meeting today. He knew that. We all knew we had an obligation, so we're here. Um, we, we've talked about this several times, Chairman, but I'll, I'll table the discussion until we get an executive session, and I'll talk about the law in the executive session. Okay, but the bottom line is, from the parliamentary standpoint, we have a we have a substitute, we have an an amended motion on the floor. Uh huh. And would you restate that amended motion? And that is that we table this until the attorney is present. Correct. Okay. Did we? Is there a second to that particular motion? Yes, I second the motion. Okay. It has been moved and properly seconded that we table this discussion until the attorney is present uh, concerning the uh, Meals on Wheels contract. All of you who are in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Please uh, let us, better yet, let it be known by show of hands. Okay. That is one, two, three, four. The opposers have the same option. Nay. Okay. All right. The vote is four to two that this is tabled uh, until the attorney is present. And it is so ordered. Okay. Could you ask her to um, give me a copy of the. Um Minutes, please, Ms. Elmo. To me, use a copy of the minutes. Tasha, can you get to me because somebody? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, two packets, actually. Okay. Two. Two. All right. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, I, I've lost my place. <laughs> Did we approve the minutes? No. Okay. Okay. Um, Chair will accept a motion to for the approval of the minutes with uh, the changes as outlined by uh, Commissioner Porter. I'll make a motion we accept the uh, new approved minutes with the changes. Is there a second? I second the motion. Let it be known that there it has been moved and properly seconded to uh, approve the minutes uh, with the changes as outlined by uh, Brother Porter. All of those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. aye. Opposers have the same option. Okay. All right, we are now moving into our old business. May I ask, uh, what is the board travel policy uh, procedures? Yeah, I just wanted to remind the board that. Um, the board um, travel procedures, you know, the policy, we're not making any changes. I just want to remind the um, board of commissioners that once you um, travel to please turn in your receipts within the 10 days of return, of return. and also that um, when we give you the check for your hotel, per diem, et cetera, sometimes when we make the deposit, they give, um, take one night off the credit card and what happens, things. What happens is um, you all will owe us um, the difference. So for example, most of the time, not most of the time, each time we give you all the entire amount of the hotel room stay, but sometimes the hotel does take one night off our credit card. So just want to remind you all, you still have to return that money back, any unused funds. And um, all receipts for food expenses, your food expenses must be turned in to reflect, the, if possible, the receipt should only reflect your meals and not any one that you take with you. That include parking, Uber, et cetera. 
those are all your expenses as it relates to travel. Any questions about the procedures? No questions, just a comment. Are we going to get the travel credit card? No, we're not going to be able to do that. Um, there were some more things that needed to be added to that, um, which we thought would not be in. Um, basically, they wanted to check my credit in order for y'all to get a car, which I think is ridiculous. And so um, we um, decided to look at something different. And I think um, the Director of Finance is looking at another way that we might be able to do it with another bank. Um, but the Divi card that we wanted to do, they wanted to, um, I would, they would have had to check my credit in order to do that, which would mean that is a, what do you call it, a, um, that's a hard inquiry, yeah. So that's why we couldn't go with the Divi card. Thank you. Are there any questions on, are there any questions on the board travel procedures? Okay. All right, we're moving to new business. Uh, social media, your policy. Yes, um, we wanted to um, add this to our EIM. That is the employee information manual that we um, abide by the employees to include me in the um, EIM. And so we wanted to change, um, you all may not see it, but it's on page 18 of our packet, and I'll read it to you all. Um, we are proposing to add the following. The Housing Authority of Florence's purpose of social media engagement is to build communication and trust with our residents, visitors, and to encourage participation through comments and feedback. The Housing Authority HAF goals are aimed to effectively use social media accounts to provide information, support community engagement and outreach, support marketing and promotional campaigns, frame the public conversation around the HAF, assist with recruitment efforts. Please be aware that everyone who engages with the Housing Authority of Florence through social media agrees to the modernization of third party content. The Housing Authority of Florence doesn't endorse, support, sanction, encourage, verify, or agree with third party comments, messages, posts, opinions, adver advertisements, videos, promoted content, external hyperlinks, link websites, or the information, products, or services contained therein. Statements, commercials, products, processes, or services posted by or on any social media site. The Housing Authority of Florence social media sites serve as a limited public forum and all content published is subject to preservation and disclosure in accordance with South Carolina State public record law. User-generated posts may be rejected or removed when the content includes any of the following, incitement of violence or violent behavior, defamation of spread of misinformation, copyrighted or commercial material, fraudulent material or accusations, or obscene or illegal material. The Housing Authority of Florence does not allow information intended to compromise the safety or security of the public, employees, or public systems to be posted. So that is what we wanted to add to the, um, to the, um, EIM, Employee Information Manual, because as you all know, social media is, is real, and there's so many different um, ways that you can communicate on social media, so we thought it was important that we included this in our EIM with our employees. So as you all know, the EIM is a policy, and it has to be approved by the board. Any changes or additions, I should say. You have heard the social media policy. What is your pleasure? First of all, are there any questions? Comments, concerns. 
chair will accept a motion to accept the social media policy. Supposed Mullins, I'll make a motion that we receive the EIM. It has been moved and properly seconded that we that we um, receive the uh, social media policy into our EIM. I hope you don't mind me restating that. Um, is there a se is there a second? I second. Please state your name for the record. Linda McCoke, I okay. second. It has been moved and properly seconded that uh, the social media policy be accepted into the um, EIM. All of those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Question. Okay, unreadiness, I'm sorry. I have a question. Question. And not to be rude, but let me, let me, and again, this is why we need the attorney to be here because I understand um, the social media, but I also understand, just say for example, uh, what's your name on the end right here? Esperon. He has a right to freedom of speech. So if we're going to make a policy to say he can't say what he wants to say, I mean, you know, can we lawfully do this? No, um, this is in the name of the housing authority. He can say whatever he wants to say. Like you say, he has the right, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. He has the right um, as an, in, a citizen. Well, this is saying not in the name of the housing authority. I understand that. So when I look at the last part that says employee who posts on social media, I just want to make sure that if he, if, what's your name here? Esperon. Esperon. <laughs> if Esperon says something, and that's his opinion. I mean, he works for housing, that's his opinion. He can say, hey, I don't like Jennifer for whatever reason. That's his personal opinion. If we're going to put this in place, is there going to be any backlash if he act on his own? Because I think this is a double standard now. We're saying to the employees, say what you want to say. But then if they say something, is there going to be any recourse if, they act, if he acts on his own to say, I don't like Jennifer? Are we going to come back and say, you said something about your superior. Did you act on your own or did you act as a representative? And I'm just saying this, just dealing in management, man. Um, we have to be, I mean, I agree with the policy put in place, but it's a one-sided policy. So if, if he's going to act on his own, is he going to be able to act on his own and there'll be backlash? Or is he going to be able to act as an employee? And that's just my, my two cents. Well, let me tell you all something. One of the things, when we submit a policy to the board, we vet it through the attorney. So this was already vetted through the attorney. We sent this for his approval. So anytime I submit a policy change to you all, prior to me even submitting it and, and bringing it to the board, we always go through the um, attorney. So it was already vetted through the attorney. Other organizations, and um, to your point, uh, Mr. Moultrie, is that they have lost their job because they were speaking on their own about a particular person. I've known people to lose their jobs because they had a, a fight on social media with another employee, et cetera. And so this is unfortunately the world that we are living in, um, but it was vetted through our attorney prior to me submitting it to the board, presenting it to the board. And that's what we do with every policy that we submit to you all. I hear what you're saying, Ms. Elmo. And again, I'm just saying, if we're going to be the board and we're going to make a policy, we don't need to make a double standard policy. So if the board today is going to make this policy and we're going to say, again, what's your name? Esperon. Esperon. <laughs> you can talk about Jennifer. That's what you want to do. Then we need to also say, if Esperon say, I'm Esperon John, or whatever his last name is, and I don't like Jennifer. Now, we got to make sure that if he said that on his own and he comes into work tomorrow, Jennifer don't retaliate on him because he says that. Now, you, because we're saying he has the right to say whatever he wants to say. So then, but if, again, I hear what you're saying, but I'm just saying, let's be real about it. It's social media, man. And if somebody says, because this is what you're saying, Ms. Elmo, this is more, this is what the policy is saying. If Esperon is saying, I don't like Ms. Elmo because she's a witch, okay, he's saying that on his own now. So then if he says that on his own, what is going to be the outcome because he is an employee, which doesn't make sense. 
But the question, the question that I would ask uh, Brother Moultrie would be, even given your example, if Esperon uses his own social media page to um, make that kind of statement, then this board has no, as far as I see, this board has no authority at this, but you know, uh, even with this policy, because this policy basically covers the social media of the are the social media accounts right. of the housing authority of Florence. I mean, of the, of the housing authority of Florence. So I'm just wondering, does does it come into does it come into play that you know I I don't see where this policy crosses the line into into the freedom of speech area as long as he does not are long given your example as long as it is not posted on the housing authority of Florence uh, web page the housing authority of Florence uh, Facebook page the housing authority of Florence Twitter page <laughs> you know Twitch page <laughs> you know whatever page that the housing authority of Florence owns. Now, we can't control what Mr. Esperon says on, on his own page. Or we can't control what, what anybody basically says on their own page. Um, may not like it, but I don't see where we can control it. I don't see where we can, we can I don't see where we can regulate it. You're 100% right, but I go back to this, and I'm going to be done with it. We're saying that Mr. Esperon can say whatever he want to say, but when he says it, if there is retaliation because he's saying it, we all know as a board we have a faulty grievance system. I mean, we've not dealt with the grievance system, so we're saying to them, we're putting a policy out here that's putting the employees in a place where if Mr. Esperon uses personal page and he said, let's face reality, man, I'm in business. If somebody says something bad to me, one of the employees, I don't have to go on social media, one of the employees gonna call me and tell me they say that. So if Mr. Esperon says something on his personal page, this is what the board is saying, because I want to be very clear before we vote. If Mr. Esperon says, I don't like Jennifer, when he comes back to work, if Jennifer gives him some retaliation, can he come back before the board to help him deal with that problem? Because that's what we're saying now. If we, if we if we say, okay, say what you want to say on social media, as long as it's your page, you say whatever you want to say, it's not housing page, I'm just saying, what is going to be the back course if we allow this policy to pass? And, Brother Moultrie, I'm, I'm going to, I have to keep reminding that although we are a governing board, we are not a part of the um, uh, of, of the grievance procedure part. So, can he come before he can he come back before that board with that particular grievance at this particular point? No, not at not at this particular point. Um, and until we, you know, until we look at those the uh, that particular procedure. Um, the only thing that we can do is what we have done in the past, and that is we can listen and we can refer this back to, you know, we can refer this back to management at this particular point. So, so why would we want to set a policy to set them up then? I mean, we're saying we don't have a grievance system, and on one hand, boy, we're saying let Mr. Esperanza say what he wants to say in his personal page, but then let's face reality. Jennifer's human. If he if she says if he says something to Jennifer, she may not get him today, but next week she'll have him on a shovel in the ditch. Okay. Let's, I mean, come on, boy, man. Let's be real about it. I'm just <laughs> we gotta remember this, man. When we policy, when we when we share when we make these policies and procedures, we're the board. It's time for us to stop playing games. We have to look out for our employees. We have to. We can't make policies and procedures to put them in harm's way. And this exactly is what we will be doing because we have, you just said it, we have a grievance system that is faulty. And I hear what you're saying. I'm finished with it. I'm going to just, uh, 
I feel personally that as a board, if we're going to make this in place, then we need to also add the language in there that if this is their personal page, they do whatever, and what happens if they're going to be retaliation? Because we can't, we, Chair, we can't have a double standard to say, okay, they got the freedom of speech, so go ahead and talk. But then we don't have a grievance system if they appeal, if Jennifer want to ride him and put him in the ditch, but he can talk about Jennifer. That's, that's crazy, guys. But I'm finished with it. Okay. All right. One more. I, I worked at McLeod Moultrie, and their policy there was, if you were caught talking about any employee, anybody came in that building, while you were in that building, you could have been terminated. If you're on the elevator with a tag on that you work for McLeod Hospital and you start talking about somebody at the hospital, somebody you've seen, and that person captures that name, they would go with the human resource and you were terminated through that policy and there was not a grievance for you because you already knew from the um, they, the employee, um, mm -hmm. they know. yes, mm -hmm. it was notated. You knew that happened. So that's a part of that policy that you knew. Mm -hmm. If you were off campus, you did whatever you wanted to do, but you couldn't bring that on that campus. Okay. Well, I worked for the state for 42 years, and you couldn't put that on your own personal Facebook page. And I was county director of juvenile justice and department of corrections direct the classification. You had your personal page and you put something on there to talk about what's going on, you were out of there. So we have to be careful what we put in writing. So that's what I'm saying, it's a double standard. We telling them to do something. You can't do that. And then when they do it, we're going to come back mm -hmm. and give them recourse because there's no grievance system. I mean, and, and all I'm saying, if we're going to put this in place, then on top of putting this in place, let's put a whistleblowing in place. So if they do bring retaliation on them for saying whatever on their personal page, then they can come to the board and tell the board what's happening. Because we can police the employees, but who's going to police the leadership? I think that it is time now that <sighs> there's a motion on the floor, and it has been seconded. Okay, You have heard the concerns. And at this particular point, I call for the question. All of those in favor of the social media policy, let it be known by raising of hands. Three. Three. Do we have a vote? All of those. All of those opposed to the social media policy, let it be known by, uh, opposed to the social media policy, let it be known by the raising of hands. I'm abstaining from voting. I'm abstaining from voting. Okay. Brother Parliamentary, I have to ask this question. At this particular point, the vote is, there are, the quorum is one, two, three, four, five, six. The quorum is six. It's seven. Um, seven. Mr. Um, correction, um, Mr. Chair, you do have a vote. He does not have a vote unless there's a tie. The chairman doesn't vote unless there's a tie. Um, Mr. Mm -mm. Mr. Mm -mm. Um, the attorney will explain that to you, but it is he does have a vote. He does have a vote. I, I'll pull it up. According to Robert's rule of order in which we operate, the chairman cannot vote. Here's why: the chairman can't host the meeting and vote. He can vote to break a tie, but he cannot vote unless there is a tie. Um, and I think that that is a discussion that we, we, we will have at another time. Mm -hmm. But at this particular point, Brother Parliamentarian, I need, the, um, I need the advice of the Parliamentarian. When the vote is two and there are four abstentions, 
did the motion pass? It dies. Okay. The motion dies, according to our parliamentarian. All right, the social media policy does not pass. Um, please bring this. Uh, Brother Chair, but it shall be revisited. With all due respect, I think if we look at the verbiage of it, I'm all for it, but I'm not for making a policy that's going to put the, the, the workers in a place where they say something and then they be later on retaliated against. Okay, so it will be revisited and we ask that this be brought back. It be revisited and we ask that this be brought back um, at our next meeting. Okay, we will move to financial reports, please. Excuse me, Commissioner. I was still waiting for my packet. Okay, um, the financial report, you all have a copy, well, some of you. Mm -hmm. um, the first part of the report is um, everyone should have received a copy of the credit card statements, um, check history, and then the business activity, which is our COCC, which is the cost center, the cost center that we use to take care of all our business. Basically, the COCC is what all of the properties that we own pay into um, for us to run all of the agencies, all three to include the properties. So for the business activities, starting on page, i tell you, on page 44 of the packet, it shows um, the month of December, we had three pay periods, and for those that's been with the board for a while know that those months, we are always um, in arrears because um, there are three um, pay periods in that month. And we always, you know, um, make up for it in the, the preceding months. Um, so I wanted you all to know that's where that came from. Um, we also had some um, various expenses that we were, did, did not plan for, like at Lakota Crossing. Um, we also had um, three vacancies where we had to do some, some paint and some renovation there. And then we had an um, unforeseen issue with the lift station here at our new building. Um, that was another cause that was unforeseen. Okay, um, Greg apartment, we did okay um, this month, I mean, as the way to January. And then going into the um, financial analyst, analysis, excuse me, of the Housing Authority of Florence. Again, because we had three pay periods, um, that's why we didn't have a favorable uh, month. In the month of December, um, we had the expenses for the Christmas um, holiday season. Um, again, with Pine, Clyde, Lakota Place, the same. Church Hill, we have many vacancies. This is the most vacancies we ever have, and that is because of the sewer um, grant, the sewer issues that we had there. And so what we did, so we have to move residents um, twice. We did not put anyone in those vacant units. So all of the vacant units, they are doing the work in there. <coughs> Excuse me, that's why the income is not as much because we're not receiving rent for those um, vacant units. Oakland Place, um, we did okay um, in the month of December. Waverly was okay as well. It was the average. A very small loss in um, Bridgeland, Parkview. We had some vacancies there. And then of course, Creekside. Um, we had several vacancies and um, issues with testing, et cetera, 
and that's why we did not have a favorable month in December. Scatter houses were okay. Pine acres, okay to average. J.L. Smith, we typically, you know, don't see a favorable month, favorable in, in a month because it's new. We have very little to do there. East Crest, the same. And the vouchers part of it, we are um, losing vouchers. People are getting off the program. And that's good and bad for us. Good because that means they're doing better and they don't need assistance from the housing authority. Bad because uh, people are getting off the program. And so we just submitted 3,000 vouchers, I mean, excuse me, letters to the people that were on the waiting list. Um, gave them 30 days to respond. After the 30, excuse me, 30 days that they don't respond, we are what we call purging the list. So by the summer, we should be opening up the voucher list, I mean the waiting list for the voucher program in Florence. But with Creekside, we had several people that want a voucher, so that's going to help our numbers as well. Emergency vouchers, we had 24. They are all leased up, finally. So kudos to the staff for making that a reality. But all 24 are now leased up. So we have no more emergency housing vouchers for Florence. PD Place, we are still within budget. With them, Pelican House, same thing. These are properties we do not own, but we manage PD and Pelican House. And I can see um, for Greg Avenue, we are 91%. For Lakota, we are 93%. For McGowan, 94%. Um, for scattered houses, we are 88%. Pelican apartments, we are 100%. Um, Lakota, Clyde, excuse me, Lakota Place, not Crossing. Clyde Court and Pine Park, we had 96%. And Church Hill, because we have all those vacant units under modernization, that's why it shows 100%, but technically we are not. Oakland, 95%. Waverly, 90%. Um, Ridgeland and Timmersville, 90%. And Parkview, 91%. Creekside, at that time it was 90%, but it is now 0% occupied. And we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. And scatter houses, we had 98%. And I was talking about the, the last couple of months, so forgive me if it looks like I was talking about January and December. Those are numbers that I was giving you. So in two of the properties, Church Hill and Creekside, we are starting to put them in modernization. What does that mean? We put them in modernization status so we can still get operating subsidy from the federal government. We are no longer getting rent for those units, but we are getting subsidy from the federal government because we put these units in modernization. That's the status that we have to put it in in order for us to still receive operating subsidy. We have met the obligation date for our grants that we received for our capital fund. We had, um, it was 2021, was due um, tomorrow, so we have met um, the 90% that we have to do by law, by not federal law, not state law, and we did meet that 90%. Excuse me, that's occupancy we're talking about? No, I'm sorry, that's um, obligation of the funds that we receive from capital fund. Right. Um, occupancy, what they'd like for you to be is at 96% overall as an agency, 90% occupied. Okay, so when you say we met 90%, what actual criteria did we meet? What we have to do is, when we, have, when we say we have to meet 90% obligation, 
we have to show that we have contracts set aside, obligated for that money. So, for example, if it's a million dollars. I understand. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Thank you. Ms. Elmo, how much is it, does it cost for the renovation? Um, of what? It's, that's a broad question. So, when you say Church Hill, Church Hill, like when you're doing a renovation at Church Hill or Creekside, okay. how much does that cost? So the one for Church Hill, remember you all had to approve, it was six point, Mr. S1, do you remember that exact number? I think it was six point four million. And then we had an amendment that I brought to you all for the asbestos, right? And and that was 400 something thousand. So we're about 6.8 million for Church Hill. And remember, this is not a complete renovation. Right. This is um, replacing the water and sewer lines. Right. I remember that. Okay. All right. So I do have another question, um, Ms. Elmo. If we are, how much you said? Point, because um, Churchill, I mean, um, Creek, not Creekside, Dizzy Gillespie for Cheryl was 2.8. And Florence got less, even though we have more Florence to fund the name. Oh, my gosh. Our, what is it? Um, I knew we did use it for another person. Ms. Monica, what's the money we had to use? Our... Not subsidy, what is it called? Reserves, yes. We had to use the reserves to um, pay the difference. So the, the reserve of question, so where does the reserve money come from? The reserve money is money that is left over from year to year, from money that is um, not spent. And so um, from year to year, we, we have a, um, a comfortable reserve. So the total renovation is going to cost us what by the time we finish with these buildings? Um, right now it's at 6.8 unless there's another modification or mod that comes our way. Yes. Can I ask two questions? How many units are there? And second, what total renovations are we doing? It's 164, correct? 164 units? 166, 100. Church here is 166 units. We are replacing the water, sewer lines. We are, are we replacing cabinets? I can't remember. I know we're doing the floors on the first floor. Um, no, just for Florence. Yes, and the cabinets. Um, we're replacing toilets. So we're trying to do the bare minimum because the plan is in another year or so to apply for a tax exempt bond to do a complete renovation of Church Hill. So are we gonna have enough money to do that or how much money do we have to add from our reserve to actually make up the difference of About four money? million. And we also are using not, um, we can also use our capital fund, that's a separate pot. And, and we've been averaging what every year for our capital fund? 2.8 million. And how much do we have in reserves currently? Um, Ms. Monica, do you know the exact? I think it's 9.9 .9 million somewhere. So now the next question is, so this four million is coming out of capital fund? No, no, operating reserve. Out of our operating reserve. Where are we getting the money from for Creekside? When you say getting the money from, what you mean by that? To we house, house them. Yes. Okay, so a couple of things. One is, if you're talking about replacing Creekside, we are asking for funding for that, okay? We do not have any money to replace Creekside. As it relates to moving them into hotels, et cetera, we are using capital fund, all right? That's that pop member I was telling you about obligation and expenditure. We're using the capital fund at this time. So that's to the pay same. For that. I want to get it right. So that's the same eight, nine no, million that. Two, talk no, that's a different pot of money. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. So this is separate from the reserves. We get capital fund grants once a year, and the capital fund grant is utilized for modernization work and also relocation. And so since we had to relocate our residents, we can use the capital fund money, which average between 2.5 to 3 million every year that we receive. That's just for the housing authority of Florence. 
Okay. And speaking on Creekside, being that that's such a big issue, um, I would like to suggest that we actually have detailed reports on what we're spending to house and feed the people at Creekside monthly, because I'm sure we're hemorrhaging from that. We will. I will definitely make sure you all get that. So do we know how much, how much we spend in January total? Yes, we got that. Um, Monica, do you have it with you? Okay, can you go get it, please? Thank you. I can tell you for um, hotel, we are averaging between 14 and 16,000 a week. Yep, that doesn't include a per diem. Yep. And how many rooms do we have? Um, right now we have, Jennifer, can you tell us? I don't wanna guess. And okay. those are all for Creekside residents? Yes. And that was 43 at, I'm sorry, Quality Inn? 42. 42. And 32. And, 32. and what's our nightly nightly rate on those rooms? One is 89, right, plus tax, and the other one is 104 plus tax. Okay, so. So it's Quality Inn and where? Okay, so at $90, even with 42 rooms, that's $3,600 per night. That's with this quality in. So in a week's time, that's already $21,000. So how, were, how are we only spending 14000 a week if just that one hotel? Again, I'm guessing. <laughs> that's what I was saying. I was in um, No offense, but that's a wide range difference because just covering those 42 rooms, we're already looking at $21,000 per well, when week. When I say, let, let me explain. When I told you that, that was the first group. Okay, I did not include the second group when I said the fourteen thousand. Okay, so okay. once again, if I if I apply that same calculation to the other thirty two rooms at that hundred and four dollars, we're still talking about three thousand dollars per night. So okay. regardless, we're doing at least twenty one thousand, and that's half. That's only me taking one hotel. Right. So we're probably doing forty thousand dollars a week in hotel fees. I'm going to give you the exact number. Okay, and I must say this with. All again, due respect to not know the difference between fourteen thousand and forty thousand is unacceptable to me. Right. Right. No, I'm 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 not clear what you're saying. What I told you is that what I'm saying is different. this: we have to have a better uh, conscious understanding of what we're spending. When I ask what we're spending in hotels weekly, and when I hear fourteen thousand, but the calculations tell me that it's at least. 40,000, I have a big issue with that. Okay, so last month, remember, we didn't have all those people in there. Regardless, we can all do math here. If we have half of the people in there, now we're saying we have 74 rooms. Once again, at half of those rooms, at 35 rooms, we're still talking about what? We're still talking about $2,500 per night. So there's no way that those numbers can even make sense. Okay, Mr. Mr. Porter, what I was telling you, was when we had the first group. I just explained that to you. The first group was how many rooms? Let's talk numbers, can, please. Can I respond? Sir? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The first, but please clarify for I'm, me I'm what trying. the first group means. I'm trying. Okay. Can I do that? Okay. Yes, so what I was saying is the very first group that we move in December. That's how many what, rooms, please? Um, 30, no, it was 20, yeah, it was 30, right? 30 rooms at that time. Okay, so that's why I asked Miss Miss Mike Miss White to bring the numbers in. Thank you. I was guessing. Okay. 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 My okay. guess was incorrect. Okay. However, you all will receive a report detailing exactly how much is being spent every month, um, starting in December. I like to okay. request a weekly because if we're going through the idea of spending $25,000 a week that we don't know about, that's not acceptable once again. Um, Mr. Chair? No, we, weekly, we're saying that we're, if these numbers are correct, if we have 74 rooms, I'm going on this, uh, these numbers that I was just giving, if we're going on 74 rooms, even at the lowest rate of $90 per night, can somebody do the math for me? 74 rooms at the lowest rate of $90 per night.
And, and let me be clear, those um, 40-something rooms just was moved in last week. So that's $6,660 per, you said four, um, per night? Per night. Okay. Okay. So if we're there for a week, how much is that per week? Let's say times five, times seven. Times seven. Mm -hmm. 46,620. And if we're there for half a year, that's 26 weeks, how much money is that? One million two hundred twelve thousand. Oh yes. One hundred and twenty dollars. So we were assuming that we're spending uh, less than half of that. Because no, we, we wasn't were, assuming that. No, not, well, let me, let me, according let me make to my the according to the fourteen thousand figure that you gave me, which is all that we had to go on, that's the number that I was going by thinking in my mind was spending somewhere in that zone. So that's where I draw that figure like, from. Like I said, Mr. Porter, I misspoke. Okay. And I told you that I went by the first number, the first bill that we received. Okay. And so we are making that correction, okay. and I'm going to make sure. But yes, it's over a million dollars. And so, but instead of we are saying, you know, we need this money, what I need for the board to do, if I can be candid right now, is to help us. Because, you know, we can say I didn't give you the correct number, which I didn't. I'm first to say I did not. And I was wrong for that. I wanted to make sure that I had the right numbers for you. But you all, we need your help as a board. Instead of us saying pointing fingers, we need help. Miss Elmore, we, you could have you could have asked for help plenty of times. Finish, please, can I please? Yes, I respect I every last one of you all. I apologize. And I ask, I ask the same because we are busting our behind, trying to take care of these residents in this situation, and we're getting beat up because we're not adding numbers right. Ms. Elmore, okay. please and, and address we, the situation and, we, and do not and grandstand, please. And we are please. trying to make sure that we receive the funding that we need to address this issue. This is a serious issue. This is not something that happens every day. And so, we're doing everything we can. You know, Jennifer, the team, we're doing everything we can to resolve this issue. We, this is not a thing that happens every day. Yeah, all of the, the, the public housing is old. And, and so what we need, we need support. We need, we need the board to say, hey, what can we do for you all? If, is it causing 14000 50000 or 100000 a week? What we need to do to help y'all? How can we go to the city? Can I address How can that? we go to the county and to help each um, the housing authority instead of fighting us? And, and beating up on us because we're doing what's right for the um, agency, what, what's right for the residents. It's not about me. It's not about our team. It's about the residents. We are only here for the residents. Can I address that? Well, can, I address, can I address that? I'll tell you how you can get the board to help us. If these people, these are your leadership team, correct? Yes. Okay. So if they come here in the meeting and they see they're just looking at us, we shouldn't have to ask you. If Jennifer is going to be on here over this process, then she should come in here every week ready to give us a report. Amen. Or the lady beside her, or anybody else. We got to stop playing these games with the day-to-day -day operation. Listen, you go to the city meeting. The financial person for the city meeting is standing there giving a finance report. You go to the county council meeting. The finance people are standing there giving a report. I pass the church. As the pastor, I don't. St I know what the finance report is, but my finance people stand up. They give the finance report. The daycare people give me the finance report. If if we're going to put people in position and then micromanage them, I mean, and if we're spending all this money, I'm going to give you a prime example. I know for a fact this system that we're in here with today, that's wasteful money. I mean, we're talking Ms. Elmo, about spending money. If we're spending all this money with, 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 uh, with these people who are this home, then we need to stop spending. I mean, when I look, I mean, this Vision 10 and this, this right here, this right here is ludicrous. I'm going to tell you the truth. This is ludicrous right here because guess what? I say this and I'm going to be close. If we're talking about security, if that's the concern, then guess what? 
if we do what's right, we don't have to worry about security. Because I'm going to tell you this. We live in a society, if you do what's wrong, and people want you, walls ain't going to stop them. That's the reality behind it. If you want our support, I'm going to give the board a prime example. I went to Al Bradley, asked for $50,000. He told us what to do. So then to send a worker down there, and that's why the will of them, the chairman, and they went right on past whoever the housing person was that was sitting there. They act as if they wasn't sitting there. I want to tell you Florence Politics 101. If you don't know somebody, you're not going to get anything. That's the, that's the reality. If you, I can't talk for the board. If you want my support, you're going to have to be transparent. You're going to have to be honest. You're going to have to be open. When we ask for something, there is no way we're asking Jennifer for something and you're asking. We're asking, what's your name? What's up? Uh, Pam. And you're asking, here's the deal. I mean, what is the purpose of them coming to the meeting if they're not going to talk? Well, why are they here? I mean, they could have. We, we, we asked for them to come for a reason. If you want our support, then let your team give us a support. We can't pray vanquiloquist, well, I'll just put my hand in Jennifer's mouth and let Jennifer talk. No, let Jennifer talk. If she's going, if, if she got the number and she's over the program and she has the list here and he has, and he has Jennifer for something, you shouldn't answer. Jennifer should, should know. We got 36 rooms. We got 74 rooms. It's costing us this. It's costing us that. I talked to this. I talked to that. And if we're not going to do that, I can tell you never going to have my support. And I'm finished with it. All right. Let's move. A little bit further, okay. Um, are we finished with the finance? Are there any other questions of that dealing with the financial report? Are there any other questions dealing with the financial report? One other thing, Chair, I would like for us, as Mr. Porter said, to get a detailed billing every week of what we're spending, what we're doing. Because at the end of the day, boy, let me say this to you: we're in trouble with City Council right now because we sit here and act quiet. I'm going to tell you something. I have integrity. I'm a business guy. And at the end of the day, I don't play with the money, but we make decisions with this money. We got to make better judgment with this money. We're spending a whole lot of money. We're spending, we, and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. When we come, if we see new things, somebody had to pay for that TV. Somebody had to pay for that system. I know this. I can tell you this. We were going to get it at our church for our people. We didn't get it because it was going to cost us about $20,000. So I knew right off the bat that ain't what we wanted to do. So if we're having problems with this money, board members, and if we're spending all this money, why don't we cut out the spending and let's try to do what we need to do? I mean, the ED just said we don't have the money to renovate the property. So if we don't have the money, wouldn't it be smart to cut back on the spending? Are there any other questions with the financials report? Can, can we go, can we move forward for our asset management, please? I, I, I took care of all of that. Okay, um, uh, all of that has been done. Um, your CEO report, uh, that's been taken care of also? No, I haven't. Okay. Okay, the, um, the CEO report, we had, um, we have a REAC inspection for the three new scattered houses that we just built. Um, it's scheduled for March 23rd. Um, that is the inspection that, the, that HUD does to all of our properties. Excuse me. It's real estate assessment. Um, center, that's what the REAC stands for. Sorry, that's great. Now. Is that better? Okay. And um, so we are in the season of the garnish of wages and taxes. Um, anyone that owes the housing authority. And so for January, it's slow. Um, we haven't received anything from taxes yet, but we received $418 for garnish of wages and previous um, rent resident payments of $256. Um, I told you all already about um, the voucher program and that we have um, leased up 24 emergency vouchers. And um, 
18 house for the veterans vouchers and um, we didn't issue any in January but we have five searching this month um, the, voucher, the regular voucher program we have three different types of vouchers uh, Mr. Porter for your information we have the regular voucher program which is section 8 and then we have the emergency housing vouchers and then we have the veteran assisted supportive housing for homeless veterans those are the three types of um, vouchers that we have um, items I did include the newsletter that um, we've been giving to our residents that's part of the uh, packet um, so we will make sure you all receive that every month um, the engineering study for Creekside is um, ongoing it just started today so they should be finished by the end of the week and did he say when he think the results will be in okay and so that is going to determine a lot of things. Once we get the results of the engineering study, we will be able to determine whether or not we should um, go through with the demolition of Creekside or do a major renovation. And that's when we will start seeking money. Um, we talk to the developer, you know, see about um, there's some grants that we can apply for, for mold um, mediation. Um, you can get up to five million. We are in the process of working on that grant, and then you know, seeing whether or not we can um, get the city, the county, even banks to leverage whatever amount of money we would need to do a complete renovation. If that's the desire, if the results of the engineering study. Okay. Um, let's see. So the development update. Want to let you all know we they had a rezoning for the um, February 14th meeting. And um, we were on the agenda for that planning board meeting, and um, they um, went ahead and decided to move it um, to the city council meeting. It should be at the um, first reading on March 13th for Pine Street. We have not submitted the tax application yet because we're waiting on state housing. State housing have not even submitted the qualification action plan, that's the QAP. That tells you how that tax credit application need what it needs to include, and so um, we are waiting for that. And as soon as that come out, we will apply for tax credit for Pine Street. Okay. Um, these are the um, updates on any lawsuits and claims. You know, protecting the names. And so I wanted you all to know. Um, one of them was um, the the judge. Um, agree that it should be dismissed and um, the complainant um, came back and asked for it not to be dismissed. Ms. Elmo, with yes. all due respect, this is what I'm saying. We got a lawyer here we paying. He should be giving us a report, not you. He okay. was in the courtroom. This is what I'm saying. Mark Bite works for this both. And if he's not going to give us a report, move on down the road. Let's get another lawyer. I mean, the cat mouse game, we're in the middle of trouble with the city because of the cat and mouse game. Now, Mr. Bite, if you're not going to show up at our meeting and you're not going to give us a report, I'm going to make a motion that we just go ahead, relieve you of your duty. You went to court. If you go to court, every board meeting, you should give us an update of what you did because this is what the board is paying you for. I mean, with all due respect, Ms. Elmo, this is what I'm saying. Don't micromanage these people. Let these people, if, if you're going to run the agency, then run the agency and let them go home. And we, don't, we can save a whole lot of money. We can take their salary and put it in the creek side. But we're paying Mark. What was the purpose of him coming if, we got, if, if you're going to tell us about the lawsuit? He's here. Tell us, Mark. What, I mean, help the board understand what happened. I mean, whichever one she was talking about. And whichever, and let me let me say this. Whichever one she was talking about, and by the way, if it's all of them, you should be giving us a report on all of them. Madam. I'd be happy to give the report, but that's the uh, the board's pleasure. Listen, Mark. Listen, hold, hold. Let me say this to you. Stop playing games with words, man. It's the board pleasure when they hired you. It was their pleasure when they hired you. What do you think they hired you for? To come in here and like, sit? Brother I mean, Moulton. come on, man. No, Douglas, no, I'm not coming on it. 
We need to stop playing games. See, we play this game if it's the board's pleasure. What did the board hire you for? Brother when they hired him, they hired, it was the board's pleasure. Brother Moultrie, and, and I, I respectfully uh, agree with what you're saying. However, as I've stated before, a lot of times that there has to be, there has to be procedures in place um, in order for things to happen. A number one, if if it has not been if if it has not been uh, communicated to the attorney that this is what is expected, then there's no way that the attorney can know that what this board is expecting of him. So I think that the first thing is that, the, the first thing is not with the pleasure of the board and so forth and so on, I think that the first thing is that there has to be an understanding of um, what every, what, of what we expect. If there's not that understanding, then we'll never get what we expect. If we don't ask for it, then we don't. Then we'll never get it. What, what just like this. Just and excuse me. Just like um, we've had a commissioner just now ask for a weekly report. You know, a weekly report on 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 particular finances. Um, if we had not asked for that, then it would be, that would not have been expected. Um, and so uh, before we, you know, before we get to the point that we say, okay, this is, you know, th before we get to the point that we say that somebody is not doing, let's get to the point of asking them to do. Uh, Brother Chairman, I've been asking that for the last three years when he was MIA and we were still paying him, all right? Ms. Elmo gave me a copy of his contract. He knows what's in his contract. The board may not know, but he knows what's in his contract. And if he doesn't know and the board doesn't know, the HR guy is right here. He can go get it and give us all a copy so that we can start off by holding him accountable. In his contract, it says that he's supposed to give us an update. That's what the contract says. He knows what he signed. He's the lawyer. I mean, with all due respect, let's stop playing these cat and mouse games. There's none of us at this table have a Jewish doctor degree but him. So none of us can go to court. I mean, he know it's only one procedure, man. Go to court, defend us, and come back and tell us what we're up against. I mean, so he has a contract, and in the contract, Mr. Douglas, it tells him that this is what he should do. Okay. Now, I feel sorry for the board if you guys don't have the contract, but I have a copy, or again, the HR guy is here. He can go get us all one. Mr. Hannah. Don't be, don't be disrespectful. I'm not. I'm just letting All you right. know. I'm just letting you know. What's your title? I'm the director of human Okay, Research. then. So you, HR is what? Not the HR guy, Mr. Ham. Listen, man, don't be disrespectful. Stop yeah, stop yeah. playing no, games, man. Ladies and gentlemen, um, no, brothers, brothers, brothers. You will not brothers, tell you this. Ho, brother you will not disrespect me, man. I'm brother the board chair. You, I'm a board member. You won't disrespect me. Brother Moultrie, we, don't have to, we, no, we don't, do not, not have no, to go there. No, I'm not going to do that. We don't have to go Douglas, there. Douglas, listen. If it was one of them disrespect Ms. Elmo, she fired. It's the same way. I'm not happy. You will not disrespect me, Ms. Elmo. I expect for you to reprimand him for that. Let us move forward. No, I expect for Ms. Elmo to reprimand him on that, and I would like to know the update at the next board meeting. He will not disrespect me because I don't disrespect Ms. Elmo, and she wouldn't allow them to disrespect her. We understand. All right, but let's let's move forward so that we can move so that we can move this meeting um, into. I can tell you this, if, if you got y'all, uh, brother, show, brother Moultrie, you might want to find somewhere else to work. Brother Moultrie, let's let's, let's work here, brother. Brother Moultrie, I promise you it won't. Let's um let's move forward. I'll get the last laugh. I promise you. Shall we? Chair will accept the motion to move into executive session. It has been moved and properly seconded that we move into executive session. All of those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Okay.